This week, Ed Scotus joins us to talk about the Holiday Hacking Challenge as we don our gay apparel. Um, we're going to talk with John Strand about the future of penetration testing. And security news for this week will address the question, who is the man behind Bitcoin? All that and more, so stay tuned. Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, the show where exploits run wild. Packets aren't the only thing getting sniffed, and systems aren't the only things getting penetrated. Functions are the only things getting wrapped, and bits aren't the only things getting banged. Those cocktails, they're flowing steady. It's Paul's Security Weekly. Black Hills Information Security, the leaders in penetration testing and active defense. Email consulting at blackhillsinfosec.com to request a quote today. NetSparker, the developers of the only false positive free web application security scanners, enabling you to automatically identify vulnerabilities and security flaws in all of your websites, web applications, and web services. NetSparker scanners are available in two editions, NetSparker Desktop and NetSparker Cloud, the enterprise online scanning service. For more information, visit their website at netsparker.com forward slash security weekly. Looking for a career change? Tenable Network Security is hiring everything from programmers to researchers. Check out all of the available positions at securityweekly.com forward slash tenable jobs. Pony Express. Check out their line of penetration testing devices, including the Pwn Pad, the Pwn Phone, and the Pwn Pro. For enterprises, there's Pwn Pulse, providing continuous visibility into wired, Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth spectrums across all physical locations, including remote sites and branch offices. For all those hard-to-reach places, there's Pony Express. Visit them on the web at PonyExpress.com. Welcome, everyone, to Cause, Cause Security Weekly. Because here's your host. He's a man in traditional <laughs> holiday season. Wants you to come sit on his lap and talk about the first thing that pops up. Mr. Paul Asadori. <laughs> it's usually my shell. But <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, everyone, to Security Weekly. This is episode 444. This is December 10th. 2015. Wow. And uh, yeah, wow. You copy huh? and paste poorly. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I did. It's a the long show. Story. The show don't say 442. <laughs> We're in. <laughs> and the title's 443. We're yeah. in a little bit of a transition uh, yeah. here at Security Weekly. We actually uh, hired a new person today. Yay. Um, yeah. Came in for an interview uh, after a phone screening, and we hired him on the spot. So nice. very uh, excited for that. Uh, behind the scenes production assistant. Um, and we'll be adding more of those. Uh, as time goes on, so that we can sit here and drink and talk about security, and other people do the real work Back to make the show. Happen. Maybe you need to hire a bartender. <laughs> we need to hire a bartender too. There's nobody there, and we don't have drinks. I'm, I'm sure uh, Keith, whose official job is not to make drinks for us, <laughs> Keith is actually uh, the executive producer for both shows, um, who also happens to be a fabulous drink maker and bartender. If you're out there, mixologist. Keith. And he's, he's right there. Like we can we can see him. Um, so uh, here in studio, other than Keith, our fabulous interim bartender, Mr. Larry Pesci, is Yay. here with us in studio. So Going to be doing more of that. Going to be traveling less. That's good. That's good. Ooh. Happy to hear that. Mr. Cook. Jeff Mann is here in studio as well. Welcome, Jeff. Thank you, Paul. Nice to have you here as always. Uh, Jeff was our... Uh, interim liquor store run guy today. <laughs> We're very happy to have a liquor store run guy, which sounds like a strange title, but, you know, it's a very important title. You've got you to have a job, right? Yeah, you got to have a job. It's an important job. Yes. Very important job. And the bar looks a lot healthier now. It, is, it looks a little healthier, yeah. It's oh. going to, we need to, over Christmas break, we're going to stock up. So we got this show and then another show um, next week, and then we'll be off until January 6th or 8th or something like that. Mr. Joff Thayer is on the lines via Skype. Mr. Joff, welcome to the show. G'day, Paul. How are you? Good to be here again for another wonderful week of Scary Weekly. Yes, we've got lots of fun things to talk about. A uh, couple of quick announcements before we uh, bring on our first fabulous guest. Use the discount code Black Friday and save 50% off on all items in our store, shop.securityweekly.com. Go there today. You only have until the end of the year 
to order the things that are available on the shop. After that, it's closing down, and we're going to do something different for next year. So, so it's more like Black Month. It is a Black Month. Black yes, month it is a Black discounts. Month. 50% off Black Friday discount code. We do have a very, very limited quantity of Security Weekly 10-year anniversary hoodies left. Uh, and select sizes of Hack Naked t-shirts, like, they're going fast. So make sure you order those, because there's going to be some new designs for next year, and you won't be able to order what we have now. Mm -hmm. Start your 2016 conference plans now and attend InfoSec World 2016, infosecworld.misti.com. That's M-S-I-T-I dot com. You haven't been to InfoSec World yet. I have not. Fun conference. It's a fun conference. Cool. Um, the uh, somewhat regular cast of characters, some of them are there, uh, like Kevin Johnson and Chris Nickerson. Nice. Um, so it's, uh, you know, it's a different audience from DEF CON or Derby CON, but some of the, like I said, regular cast and characters are there, and it, that's in uh, April 4th through the 6th in Orlando, Florida. So should be fun. Nice. I'll be speaking there, and uh, we're actually going to have a table. And we're going to be selling Hack Naked shirts. Beautiful. So. Mr. Ed Scotus joins us on the lines via Skype to talk about the 2015 Holiday Hack Challenge that he has put together. Ed, welcome to the show. Hey, how's it going, guys? It's going fantastic. I'm so glad you were able to join us uh, this week, Ed, because it is holiday time. And it is. you have a holiday challenge. Yeah, we're super excited about it. We, uh, officially, we release it on the last Friday before the SANS CDI conference starts. Um, but if we get a chance and everything's working, we push it a day early. We did that last year, and we did it today. So we launched at 12.15 p.m. Eastern time today, and we've had about 1,000 people uh, start working on it. Wow. Nice. Yeah. And, and wh how did you get 1,000 people to start? Are there, like, people who regularly participate in your holiday hack challenges? Yeah, I mean, this is actually the 12th one that we've done. Okay. So these have, these have been out there for a while. They've built kind of an audience. But we wanted to build something this year that would get new people, people maybe who've never done a capture the flag before, people mm -hmm. who are not super familiar with the technology. We wanted them to be able to play, to have fun, to make some progress. So the, the, this year's Holiday Hack Challenge, we call it Gnome in Your Home. Gnome in Your Home. And uh, it's... It's kind of like a video game. I mean, when you jump into it, you're in this little neighborhood, and you get to explore around. You get a character, and your avatar moves around. You can chat with other players. Is that like we Second want... Life, sort of? Kind of. Um, but you're you're on specific missions. You have to retrieve various holiday items. You've got to get some of my wife's cookies. You've got to get uh, some candy canes. You got to get some holiday lights, and you get to meet all of the people who worked on creating the Holiday Hack Challenge. So this is people, you know, on the Counter Hack staff. You go in there. You can meet Tim Nadine, who's He's wearing shorts. It's it's not that he's not wearing pants. They're just short pants. Um, <laughs> so are they like you, Daisy Duke short pants? No, no <laughs> are they like specs? Not. He is he is wearing a jersey from a certain football team that he loathes. Uh, so we we put that on him in there, which is kind of fun. You get to meet Jeff McJunkin. We we actually have inside of the Holiday Hack Challenge this year a little miniature virtual Net Wars tournament. So you can oh, go I thought you were going to say a little miniature virtual Joshua Wright. We that, do. We got one. Oh, you have yeah. one of those too. Okay. We got a miniature Josh Wright. There's uh, Tim Medine. We've got uh, the whole Counter Hack staff. There's Lynn Schifano, Tom Hessman, Daniel Pendolino. You can go in there and you could talk to these characters. You could talk to other people in there, your friends. But the whole scenario is this. There's a, um, there's a company called Atmos Corporation. And it sells these little dolls that you put on like a shelf and they call them gnomes not Wait, elves. is that atnus like santa backwards thanks for giving the whole thing away <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the solution. <laughs> oh my i God. just solved the holiday <laughs> hack challenge live here in security weekly it's over now <laughs> you go home new achievement unlocked <laughs> jeff mcjunkin no, Next no so it, is, it is Atmos corporation and they make these well so you have to figure out what these gnomes are all about because the idea is these gnomes go into people's homes and the parents move them around every day so the kids have to find them. And these children inside the Holiday Hack Challenge, they're named Jessica and Joshua. Um, they find that there's wireless packets streaming through their house. They don't know where they're coming from. And they analyze where they're coming from. They're coming from the gnome. So they kind of cut the gnome open and they pull out and they see there's a little video camera for its eye. 
and it's got a circuit board in there. So they extract the firmware from the circuit board, and that's what you get. So you get to go in this little place where you're, you're kind of wandering around, you get to find Jessica, you get to find Joshua, and they give you the packet capture, and they give you the circuit board. You have to go in and find cookies and and passwords. Wait, it's, now, Ed, how a, much does the gnome look like Mike Poor? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's one of the things about the gnome is in your head. You I see, see. In, in the challenge, we don't show you the gnome ever. Okay. All you when you see say gnome, gnome I picture Mike Poor. Yeah, me too. Me <laughs> too. But can you see the gnome's legs over my shoulder here? Yes. They're right there, yeah. So that was the idea. From the very start, we didn't want to tell you what the gnome looks like because we want you to imagine it in your head. But he's got these little candy cane striped legs, and they're everywhere in the challenge. As you walk around the challenge, you see little candy cane striped legs, and there's sometimes secret stuff wherever the candy cane legs are. But that's what the gnome is. You never see it for real. Now, there's a camera in its eye. So when the gnome is looking out off of a shelf, you'll see its little legs superimposed over an image. So you can mm -hmm. kind of see wow. what the gnome's look at. So NSA, Ed. So NSA. <laughs> well, you know, you can't spell Santa without an N, an S, and an A. So. Oh, yes. <laughs> is, that, is that kind of like the elf on the shelf? Oh, I don't know what you're talking about. Or is that like the gnome on a shelf? It's a gnome in your home. A gnome in your home. I got gotcha. you. Home, yeah. No, no copyright no. infringement uh, there. You know, Ed, no, Ed, Ed, I'm, 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 I'm walking around in the, the quote world right now, and I'm astonished at the level of detail for some of this stuff. There's so much in there. There's Easter eggs all over the place. There's a lot that's of fun. Like, that's like Wolfenstein 3D style. <laughs> it is. It's, it's kind of, some people say it looks kind of like NES. Mm. Um, it's the team has been working on it. The, the idea for it actually came to us two days after we released last year's challenge. So it was like December 13th, 2014. This idea happened and it was based on people saying there was an article that came out that said, you know, Elf, in the sh Elf on the Shelf can kind of train your children in that they're going to be in a surveillance state. And that got me kind of thinking, well, that's mm -hmm. interesting. And then over the last year, me and the guys at Counterhack, we've been doing a lot of pen testing of toys. I yes. don't know. If, That's uh, been in the news recently, this week, in yeah. fact. In fact, it has. Tim Medine has been doing a lot of hacking of a, of a little blonde doll he carries with him everywhere called Kayla. That's kind of weird. It's very weird. <laughs> TSA always looks at him strange because he packs <laughs> Kayla. <in the> <laughs> um, anyway, we've had, we've had professional pen test jobs where we pen test the Internet of Toys. So that article came out last December about how Elf on Your Shelf will get your children used to the surveillance state. Plus, we've been doing all this pen testing of toys kind of put them all together and said, wouldn't it be cool if we could spread these toys out around the world and people have to find them. And when they find them, they have to hack them. And when they hack them, they can see what the toys are seeing because they have streaming video cameras. And at, anyway, that's the whole idea that we've spent the last 12 months building. And we have a plot. There's this evil plot behind the whole thing. And you have to Hack into these various devices all over the world. We've got some in Japan. There's some stuff in Australia. There's stuff in, in the UK, stuff in the US too. You've got to hack into them and put together the pieces so you can figure out what the plot is and do attribution. So your, your ultimate goal is to figure out who the villain is. And uh, so you kind of put all these different pieces together. It's a lot of different skills, a lot of fun, a lot of humor. Um, and, and it's really hacking the Internet of Things. So... That's what this year's challenge is about. Now, when I was there, I was there on the show in the studio in August. Yes. And we had 80% of the plot done and about 20% of the software development done. Wow. When I was driving home from the studio, that's when the final plot element clicked. And I maybe I was inspired by uh, Paul Security Weekly show or maybe it was Paul or something you said. But driving home, it's like, that's it. We probably probably that funny time. stuff I put in my pipe that I smoked on the show that, that night, too. Could be. I remember there was a lot of smoke in, in the <laughs> studio, and I <laughs> walked out of there, and, and the funny. whole thing, it all came. It all came to me, yeah. So, Ed, how, uh, in the history of the Holiday Hack Challenge, what uh, challenge has been solved the fastest, and how long did it take someone, and, and how long do you expect this challenge to be out here before someone solves it? So, last year's challenge was solved in seven hours. Mm -hmm. It was solved that night. We released it. And then the next morning in my email box, I had a solution for it and the solution was complete. And I'm like, who is this guy that solved it? Um, this guy named Phil Smith. He's a soldier, U.S. Army, um, works down at Fort Gordon. And I, I contacted him and I said, 
because I was afraid he solved it in like an hour. Mm -hmm. When you build these things, the hardest thing is trying to make sure that it's it's easy enough for people to get into yes. that are new to this. That's what I was and getting that, at, yeah. And it's hard enough that, you know, people who really know their stuff can can have fun with it and really get deep. So when Phil told me, Phil's a near genius level guy. He was the first guy to solve all of the Sans pen test coins. You know, mm -hmm. we have those coins. Yeah, that's yeah. So he solved all those a couple months before. So I know who this guy was. He solved our Holiday Hack Challenge 2014. He told me it was seven hours, seven hours of work. And I'm like, you know, if a genius level guy takes seven hours, I think we did right. Yep. I think you're good. This one, um, there's there's more to it. Uh, it, there's more fun. There's more easy stuff. There's more complex stuff. And it does have this worldwide geographic distribution. So we hope people will spend a day or two having mm -hmm. fun through the whole holiday season. Look, we run this whole contest until January 4th. Right. So, I mean, it's, 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 you've got at least three weeks to kind of work your way through it. Plus, we've always kept up all of our holiday hack challenges from the past. You can do the 2014 one if you want. You can do the 2012 one if you want. They're all up, so you could practice year-round. But the competitive part of this mm -hmm. runs through January 4th. Now, does um, everyone that saw – do you win a prize if you solve the challenge? So we have uh, 10 prizes. So uh, the top – well, the 10 winners will receive a prize. What we do is we have seven random draw prizes. So anybody who submits really anything, if you send us an email saying, hi, you're entered into the random draw. Mm -hmm. So everybody can win that. We got seven of those. You win a Net Wars t-shirt. We have two other prizes. One is for the most creative answer that's technically right. And the other is for the technically best answer. Mm -hmm. And those people win uh, four months to Net Wars Continuous, which normally costs a couple thousand dollars. So that, that's kind of cool. That's nine of the, the 10 prizes. The so Networks T-shirt, Networks Continuous, the grand prize. This is for the just the best of the best. Uh, you win a um, a free Sans online class. So it could be Sans on demand, Sans V Live, Sans simulcast. That's worth like five thousand mm -hmm. dollars. I remember if you go back two years ago, the grand prize was my book, which cost thirty five dollars. Yeah, so, <laughs> like years, you know. And then and then Sans said, hey, wh why don't you give away a free online class? I'm like. Dude, that's yeah, yes. cool. So grand prize is a class. So mm -hmm. yeah. do you do you uh, hire the people that have solved your challenges in the past, or it just so happens the army has this really cool program called Training with Industry (TWI), and that's where they'll take a soldier mm -hmm. and they send him to work with industry for a year. Now this is done so that there can be knowledge transfer, so that the soldier goes back with a lot more knowledge and can better serve his country, you know, working in the army. Now the company gets benefit as well because they have a soldier working for them for a year mm -hmm. and they can, you know, create amazing things in that time. So one of the main developers of the 2015 holiday hack challenge is Philip Smith, who is our soldier who is assigned to us. He started working here in August and he's been working nearly full time on holiday hack development since that time just infusing all these ideas. This holiday hack challenge, when you get into that, I mean, you, you run around the neighborhood and it's kind of fun. Larry's doing that right now, I suppose. Mm, yep. There are some <laughs> really cool and cutting edge technologies in this thing. Node.js, which has all this server side JavaScript so we can achieve really incredible scale. Um, it's, it's really fun. We wanted to build sort of an operations backend so we could watch as people are moving around in there. There is a, um, I think you guys will like this. This is not me throwing down the gauntlet, but let me just point out there is a dirty word filter in there so that when you're in. <laughs> if you, now, look, you can get around a dirty word filter. It's yeah, you realize hard. now everyone's trying to get around the dirty word filter as you say that. The best part of the dirty word filter is if you type in a dirty word, it re, it, it'll type what you type around the dirty word, but the dirty word itself is replaced with gnome. Yeah. So you walk up to somebody and say, I'd like to gnome you, or you've got to be gnoming me. Right? <laughs> There's, there's so much little fun stuff like that I mean, throughout. If you go to my office, my office is inside uh, yes, the is. Hack neighborhood. There's an Enigma machine on the shelf. You'll oh, see that's it. Cool. There's Easter eggs. In fact, one of the Easter eggs is just a. It's just an egg sitting on the street. You walk up to it. And it says, <laughs> I found I'm that. An Easter egg. I yeah, found that. Just, yeah, I'm an Easter egg. And that's then awesome. you're like, You try to talk to it, and it just says, "That's all. I'm just an Easter egg." So, <laughs> so Ed, how how do people uh, find out uh, how to play the Holiday Hack Challenge and access all the previous years? So all you need to do is go to holidayhackchallenge.com, and there you'll see what we call the story. And that's that's the whole idea of of this gnome and what 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 Atnus Corporation is. And so we call it the narrative or the story. So you can read that. And then there's a link there called the neighborhood. 
You click on the neighborhood, and that's when you create a character. It's really easy to do. This takes like 30 seconds. Yep. Create a character. You're dropped into the neighborhood, and you can start running around. You can chat with other players. You can chat with me and my team that are in there, and you have to start fetching different things, including packet capture files, GNOME firmware. I'm so excited to be able to tell people about this. Is I have been... It's been like a is, year. Yeah, you've been working on it for a year, right? Is, is there, but is there a virtual Hessman? There is game? a virtual Hessman. There of is. course, a, the virtual Hessman is the Oracle. The Oracle. It is. Yes. If so, so the idea is, if you want to hack something that you think is part of in scope, you have to walk up to Tom Hessman, the virtual Tom Hessman. He's a guy who works for me. For those that don't know, you walk up to him, and Tom Hessman says, "Tell me an IP address, and I'll tell you if it's in scope." And you give him an IP address. And he will say yes or no, you can attack that one or not. That's So that's a way that we are able to vet so a player can make sure that they're staying in scope. But we don't tell you the IP addresses. You have to find them by this internet-wide scavenger hunt. So you got to figure out where these things are. Then you go in to the neighborhood. You go to Tom Hessman. You say, can I attack this IP address? And he says yes or no. That's kind of cool. The other thing – so you the know, that's – that, that's okay. so much easier than trying to attack the entire internet. Well played. Ed. <laughs> well, you know, look, there are some people who, who try to attack the entire internet, but we won't get into the details of that right now. Um, the other thing is, so the neighborhood gives us that ability to have fun for new players, people who've never done a CTF. It also gives us the ability to have a dialogue back and forth with players about is this in scope or not. And also, it it's an automated hint system. If you, as you run around inside, you can walk up to people and they will give you hints. Um, and we even tell you in the story who can give you what hints. Mm -hmm. So if you're trying to do directory traversal attacks, you talk to this person. If you're trying to do node.js you know, uh, injection, you talk to that person. If you're trying to, I mean, I don't wanna give it all away, but we tell you exactly who to talk to, who will give you hints so you can work your way up. And and really, we've got, we've got essentially different levels of this. So if you're brand new to this, we designed the first set of challenges in it, so almost everybody can do them. But then there's challenges that as you move on, they get really sophisticated. I mean, really cool, deep stuff like, you know, SANS Security 660 and 760 advanced pen testing and exploit development. There are some challenges in there that, that pull on that kind of material. So we wanted to go really wide with this stuff. Nice. Yeah. Holidayhackchallenge.com. Now, Ed, yeah. I have a challenge for you. I'm flipping oh. the tables on you now. <laughs> oh, my. This is the okay. first time we've ever done this oh. on Security Weekly. Is this the new questions? This is the new okay. questions. Uh, can I ask another question yeah. about the Holiday Hack Challenge first? <laughs> Ed, quite honestly, I'm fascinated by the game design. Larry's gone. Did, uh, <laughs> was that something that you guys wrote in-house? or it, so, it, this, this smacks of someone that used to work for you. Oh, yeah. This reeks of someone so, that used to work for you. So, so let me tell you about that. So, so – the idea of using this technology originally came from Josh Wright. I asked Josh Wright, I said, I want you to do something that will blow people's mind, that's really pushing the envelope, that has this, this sort of interactivity. And Josh said, we want to build this in BrowserQuest. BrowserQuest is a free, open source, online game built in Node.js. Now, BrowserQuest is a cool starting point, but we spent months and months and months modding it to make it do what we want. And we talked to a lot of gaming experts, including Yori Kovichko. Nice. Yor yeah, Yori's involved with this. His fingerprints are on this. He helped to, to ensure the game dynamics are fun. We, we reached out to him and said, hey, Yori, would you play our game? We did this like two months ago. So he could kind of go through it and say, you know, add this to it. There needs to be more suspense here. There needs to be more of a drama there, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, Yori, Yori worked for me uh, for three years um, as a full-time employee. He actually worked for me like for four years as an intern before that. And his dream was always to make video games. And he came to work for CounterHack because, hey, we're making video games for InfoSec people. After three years, he did leave because he wanted to do you know, video game design full-time. And I, I totally respect that. I, I miss the guy. He's fantastic. Um, but he did help influence this thing. And uh, I'm I, please, everybody should know this is totally free. We give this away. We do it as a labor of love. Um, we really want people to just play, have fun, and learn. This is all about learning. The other thing is I was joking with my team. This was, gosh, I guess it was about two weeks ago. And I said, guys, what if all of CounterHack, you know, this company that we have here, like 10 people now, what if all of CounterHack exists solely to create the Holiday Hack Challenge and give it away for free? And everything else we do, NetWar, CyberCity, all this other stuff that we work on for SANS, um, we just do that so that we can make enough money to live so that we can give Holiday Hack away for free. And they all like laughed and said, you know, 
actually, maybe that is true. <laughs> so I, that's actually what I thought for years, Ed. That's <laughs> what I thought you were doing, I, uh, Ed. This, I have to teach 12 to 15 times at Sands a year to, uh, to pay for my counter hack, uh, hacker holiday challenge addiction. Uh, <clears throat> That's cool, man. Cool. Now, Look what I'm you. really curious about with the holiday hacker cha- with the holiday hack challenge and all that, is yes. I wonder. Uh, I've been thinking about this for a while. Is there an uptick of companies that get compromised between now <laughs> and the end of the year, <laughs> simply because of all the security professionals that aren't doing their job because of this? I have heard that the productivity of the information security space plummets when we release holiday hack challenge. <laughs> <laughs> But I'd like to think, look, the other 11 months of the year, they're that much more effective because right. of what they've learned and how – I just made that up. <laughs> I hope no, that was good. I like that. Okay, thanks. So, Ed, for the first time ever on Security Weekly, we've come up with a new five questions. Everyone is familiar with the original five questions that we've asked guests now for years. Okay. And a lot of people we like to invite back on the show, such as Ed Scotus. Um, and I'm like, well, I, we already asked them the five questions, so we need new five, five questions. questions. So these five questions are based on the old five questions with a little bit of different twist. And okay. Ed has not seen these questions. We are not prepping the guests for these questions. So Ed is going to answer these questions for the first time ever here on Security Weekly. It is a deep honor. Thank you so much. This is my 11th time on the show, by the way. So you're the perfect person to take these on, uh, I'm, I'm a, Ed, because you have, are so experienced coming on the show and uh, I can't and wait to hear he happens your answers. to be on right now. And he's on right and, now. Yeah, <laughs> yes. that's true. And, and I'm, I'm nervous. I mean, really, I don't know what to say. Uh, well, you thank know, you. Uh, maybe you should be. Okay, so okay. <laughs> <laughs> question one. What is one thing about yourself that most people don't know? What is one thing about myself that most people don't know? I'll, I I'll live give you my an, life very I was going to buy you some time, but if you're ready to answer, go oh, ahead. Oh, please, my time. Okay, I, I, so uh, this actually came from my wife went to a Christmas party, and they all had to like put in a box like one thing about yourself. And my wife's thing was that while we're driving down the road, and she's done this ever since I first know my wife, we're driving down the road, she'll see someone like working in the yard, like bending over doing yard work, and she'll honk the horn at them, <laughs> and when they stand up, they'll wave. And she just says, everyone, wherever we go, the kids now get the great kick out of it because they know if they see someone like doing yard work or standing on the road, and mom honks the horn and they like stand up, they're like, what is that? And she just laughs. (laughs) Most people don't know that about my wife. I think it's hilarious. We all know it now. (laughs) Yeah. So they put it in a box and they read it and you had to guess who it was. Guess who it was, yes, Jeff. Thank you very much. Okay. So so you could say one, Ed, and it's either yours or somebody else's. Sure. (laughs) So I I live my life very publicly. I do. Um, I always have. You know, I I teach these classes. I tell stories about, you know, drawn from my life and such. And I I really don't keep many secrets. There is something a lot of people don't know about me, though, I think. Um, So I'm Edward Frank Scotus. My father is Frank Edward Scotus. His father was Edward Frank Scotus. His father was... Frank Edward Scotus, five generations. My son's named Joshua after the movie War Games. Everybody knows that. Yeah, everyone knows that. <laughs> My great-grandfather, though, had a secret room in his business establishment, and it was a speakeasy. So I have a secret room, too. Um, it turns out law enforcement occasionally visits my secret room so we can help them learn you know, stuff for security. And law enforcement used to visit his secret room, but it was on uh, different terms. So <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, Ed, the second question. Choose a song that, in your opinion, best represents just one of the following. Either A, your life. B, one that you play to get pumped up. Or C, the best breakup song. Wow. Oh, my gosh. Um... One that I get, I play to get pumped up, especially, look, it's the holiday season, okay? So I'm going to go with a holiday song. Um, it is the um, Sarajevo song by Trans-Siberian Orchestra. When that thing is going, I'm like a holiday maniac, right? You know the song I'm talking about. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's it's in fact, it's in Holiday Hack Challenge, right? The Holiday Hack nice. Challenge actually has, we, we got 8-bit uh, music throughout the whole thing. And it's, you know the one I'm talking about, right? It's like oh, yeah. big, yeah, yeah. Da, da, da. yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. That so I, I'll put that on during the holidays, and it just gets me going. It's fun to hack with, yeah, nice. hack with too nice. as well. Yeah, yeah. Question three: As hmm. most people know, the popular game of Ask Grabby, Grabby is played with teams of three. Wow. 
choose two people, <laughs> other than, of course, yourself, to represent your team in the popular game of Ask Grabby Grabby. Wow. See, I mean, the obvious answer is is Larry and you, but I mean, that's just too <laughs> obvious. Um, <laughs> we're very well yeah. versed in the game of Ask Grabby Grabby. Larry and I yeah, play Ask Grabby yeah, Grabby all right the time. <laughs> it's yeah, it's just they're, unfair. They're so I think. You want somebody with you want somebody with good hands, right? I mean, strong hands. So, <laughs> strong hands, yes. Good hands yeah. or strong hands. And yeah. I, I want to I play against style, you know, because you know you say, well, you know, if you go with like somebody that's, that's just like you, so, I tell you, I think Rob Lee has some pretty big Does. Meat, meaty, yeah, cleavers on the end of his hands. I bet you that man can grab an ass. I'd like to play. With um, Rob. I'd like to play with Rob. I'd so, like to play with Rob. Yeah, that'd be good. Okay. So that's that's one of my my two. Um, you know. And if I mention Rob, I have to go with Eric Cole for my third. Wow. Um, yeah. Eric brings a lot I mean, of character. He's, 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 he's a squirrely one. Yeah. I, I love I those guys. I was to say, this is probably one of those times where I'm very, very happy, Ed, that you did not pick me. <laughs> 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 it's all right, John. You can be on my team, and we'll play me, you, Larry, against Ed, Rob, and Eric. That would be an we'll epic lose. game of Ask Grabby Grab. I'll lose. Maybe at a Sands conference coming to you. <laughs> You get to see. See, see, John would just lose on purpose, though. (laughs) (laughs) Again and again and again and again. So, Ed, question four: If you could have dinner with just one person, other than the people who you chose to be your parents, who would it be, and why? And this can be alive or dead, fiction or nonfiction. Wow, that is that's like deep. Um. The first one that really comes to mind that I mean, I, just for me to learn and try to understand what's going on there, um, Alan Turing. Nice. Can you I, I knew, I knew uh, you were going to answer that was coming. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I guess I'm too predictable. But that yeah. would just, yeah. Um, cool. Question five. Outside of the career you chose or the career that chose you, if you could choose anything, what would be your fantasy dream career or job? This one I know. I would love to be a cartoonist. That was when I was a child. I always wanted to be a cartoonist. The problem is I have absolutely no talent in drawing anything. <laughs> yes, I, I am in that group as well. Ed. You yes. always drew. But, what was the name of that little character in the magazines? You stick always, figure. That's no, my little, yeah. draw. Well, that's XKCD. Drew. XKCD showed you. Yeah. As long as you're clever and smart and funny, you don't actually have to be able to draw anything. Unfortunately, I, I've got none of those. So you know, <laughs> I, I do infosec. <laughs> There you go. Ed, thank you very much for coming on Security Weekly. You know, as always, it's a pleasure having you on the show. Uh, thank you for going through our five questions. That was, that was a great test. We're, we're going to use them on all our repeat guests now. Yes. Good questions. Thank you so much, folks. All you guys there, just your dear friends. I wish you happy holidays. Um, enjoy this season. It's such a special time. Spend some time with family, hanging out. And, uh, and please go try out the Holiday Hack Challenge. I think you'll have fun with it. HolidayHackChallenge.com. Ed, thank you very much. Thanks, guys. See you at CDI, Ed. (laughs) Look forward to it. With that, we're going to take a short break. Come back with Mr. John Strand and talk about penetration testing. So stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. We're talking about penetration testing? Woohoo. Woohoo. Hey, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Ed. Thanks, Ed.